Hello, uh, let us now know what is phylum terminale. It is one of the extension or processes or special parts of the pia matter of the spinal cord. Spinal cord extensions or processes are few. One of them is phylum terminale, the other one may be subarachnoid septum, the third one may be ligamentum denticulatum, fourth one linea splendens. These four phylum terminale, subarachnoid septum, ligamentum denticulatum, linea splendens are the extensions or processes or special parts of pia matter of spinal cord. Now let us go with one of it that is the phylum terminale. What it is? It is a delicate, so let us go with the introduction and extent. It is a delicate, thin, thread-like, glistening structure. It is a delicate, glistening white, thread-like structure extending from the conus medullaris like this to the coccyx vertebra. This is a side view, that means it is a delicate, thin like glistening structure extending from the conus medullaris to the coccyx vertebra. So front view, so this one is a conus medullaris from here, this is, this is our phylum terminal like this. Okay. So, extent is from the conus medullaris, this is conus medullaris that is the lower part of the spinal cord at the level of L1. So, from the level of the L1 to coccyx it is phylum terminal. Size, what is its size? It is around 20 centimeters of which 15 centimeters, the proximal 15 centimeters from here to here, proximal 15 centimeters is called phylum terminal internum and the remaining 5 centimeters we call it as phylum terminal externum. Composition, it is made up of non-nervous tissue called the pia matter which may contain some nerve fibers within the upper part which is considered as the remnants of second, third and fourth coccygeal nerves. I remember, repeat, it is made up of non-nervous tissue that is the pia matter only, but it may contain some nerve fibers which may be the rudiments of the second, third and fourth coccygeal nerves. Now coming to its parts, I have said earlier it is made up of phylum terminal internum, phylum terminal externum. Now this one is from here to here, it is this till here it is phylum terminal internum because it is contained within the dural sac. This is pia matter, it is limited on the outside by the arachnoid matter and dura matter. So it is contained within the dural sac, hence it is called phylum terminal internum and it is around 15 centimeters. The remaining part that means from here to here, it is limited by the dural sac like this. So, this is phylum terminal internum, phylum terminal internum. Whereas this portion which is not limited by the dural sheath and the phylum terminal internum ends at what level? S2 level. See here you are see this is phylum terminal internum, it is ending at the level of S2. The remaining portion of the phylum terminal, it is not covered by the dural sheath, hence we call it as phylum terminal externum and that extends from S2 to C1 and not limited by any dural sheath, is it clear? Now coming to the last part, clinical importance, one of the most clinical importance is doing the lumbar puncture at the subarachnoid space at the level of L3, L4, somewhere here a lumbar needle, puncture needle is introduced there where the subarachnoid space is roomy which forms a lumbar cistern there and that is one clinical importance. Second one is normally the phylum terminal during development is thin and elastic. 
but sometimes it becomes thick and fat laden where in the cephezoid that means cephalic movement of the spinal cord during development may be impaired and the growth of the vertebral column may be restricted because of this this is all about phylum terminal thank you